adolescent cannabis use accelerates the thinning of the prefrontal cortex and the gray matter in particular. So what this means is while during normal development, the gray matter, the prefrontal cortex and all the cells there are indeed intended. It's a normal process for it to thicken and then thin a little bit as connections are adjusted and people learn and mature and grow up. This is part of the normal, healthy maturational process, independent of cannabis use. When kids, because these really are kids, use cannabis and it doesn't matter the mode of cannabis delivery, whether or not it's vaping or smoking or edible, that gray matter thins at a much, much greater rate. And the reason I like this paper published in Translational Psychiatry this year so much is that they link the amount of cannabis use, heavy, moderate, light, or no cannabis use to the rate of prefrontal cortical thinning. And it's absolutely clear from these data that the more often young people, meaning individuals between the age of 14 and 25, the more often they consume or smoke or vape cannabis, the faster and the more extreme that cortical thinning is. And the cortical thinning is occurring in exactly the area of the brain that's involved in planning, in control over one's emotions, in reflexes, in organizing one's life in a number of different ways, anywhere from cleaning one's room, literally, you know, knowing what goes where, to making plans that extend out through the day, through the week, through a year. Essentially becoming a functional human being involves using your prefrontal cortex in a variety of different contexts and different sort of time domains, the time domain of an hour, the time domain of a day. Making plans and being able to execute plans is fundamental to being a healthy human being. And it's absolutely clear from these data that the more cannabis one uses, the more impaired those neural circuits are. There's simply no other way to, to view these data. In fact, so much so that even small amounts of cannabis use are associated with rates of cortical thinning and degrees of cortical thinning that are really detrimental and concerning for normal cognitive processes. If you were somebody who smoked marijuana or consumed cannabis in any form or another during adolescence, does that mean that your prefrontal cortex can never be rescued, that it can't come back? Well, the short answer is it probably can be rescued to some degree. It will depend on how much cannabis you were using and how often and what strains of cannabis, et cetera. There's really no traveling back in time. As my graduate advisor used to say, you know, time machines are broken. At least for now, we don't have time machines. So all you can really do is try and emphasize, first of all, quitting cannabis in any form and focusing on behaviors that emphasize endothelial cell blood flow health to the brain. So that would be cardiovascular exercise, adequate nutrition, not smoking nicotine. And there are a number of other things that one can do. We will do an entire episode all about trying to reverse the effects of cannabis and other drug use during adolescence. We don't have time to do a deep dive on that right now, but all the things that standardize and kind of promote health, adequate sleep, uh, good social connection, regular cardiovascular and weight training exercise, healthy nutrition, and what that represents to you, healthy metabolic function and weight, et cetera. Those are all going to facilitate some recovery of brain function in particular prefrontal cortical function by way of all the positive effects that those behaviors and choices have. But with that said, if you are in the age bracket that I've been referring to, this 14 to 25 year old age bracket, and you are a occasional even, or chronic cannabis user, you should be very, very careful and concerned about the long-term effects that, that could potentially have. That statement is bolstered by another statistic, which is that unlike a lot of other drugs, the rate of cannabis use is strongly related to how dangerous people perceive cannabis to be.